Hi everyone! Welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 24, I think that's a 4, 24 of my podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy that you're here. Today is a really nice sunny Friday in June on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. And like I said, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to returning viewers. Thank you so much for coming back and welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. So um, today I have got some super cool fun stuff to talk with you guys about. I am so excited about some of the things I've got today. Um, first I'm going to tell you about what I'm drinking. This was some tea sent to me as a birthday gift from my lovely friend Amanda from Dyer Bear Yarns who sponsored our last knit along. Uh, Dyer Bear Yarns on Etsy, check her out. She so, so sweetly mailed me a birthday gift and it was such a surprise. Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, so she sent me some tea from a tea company that she really likes called Plum Deluxe and it's this delicious Oregon breakfast black tea and it is so super good. I've been drinking it and it's really funny because um, my sister actually as a birthday gift got me a subscription to their tea of the month club, the herbal version. So I was super excited to get um, some black tea in the mail. So thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I love it. Um, it's super delicious. Check them out if you haven't yet. I'll link to them in the show notes. First, I want to tell you that we have a Ravelry group that you should totally go check out. It is under Squirrel Pie Productions in Ravelry, and that's where you'll find the show notes to this episode and all previous episodes. It's also where you'll find Give Along News and Knit Along News, both of which we have in today's episode. Exciting. First, I'm going to tell you about the new knit along that we're doing. I am really excited about it. Um, so it is a knit along that's going to start now. Whips are allowed, and it's going to be a brioche knit along. Big surprise. I'm obsessed with brioche right now. And I want you all to knit some with me because I really, 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 really think that you should be knitting brioche especially if you haven't done it yet. Do it. Do it with me. Do it with everybody else. So <laughs> we're having a brioche knit along. Um, it is, I hadn't decided how long it's going to run yet, so I'm going to decide right now. Let's see what it's, June? It's going to run till the end of July. It is going to end on, hold on. So I just checked my calendar and I decided that the brioche knit along is going to run through to August 3rd. So you've got almost a couple months to pick a pattern, get going, find out what you want to do, and knit some brioche with me and the rest of the group. So I'm super excited. I am going to find a bunch of awesome brioche patterns and link to them in the chatter thread post so that you can get some ideas. I am going to knit the Rebel 2 shawl, which I have wanted to knit ever since it came out uh, last month. And I think I need some help because I have a couple of yarn options, but I don't know what I want to do yet. So I'm going to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you my two options in a second. And I want you guys to tell me which you think I should do, or if you think I should do a different combination. Um, but brioche is so much fun and I hope you decide to knit along with me. Um, there will be prizes, of course, because prizes are the best. And I got our first prize donation already, and I'm so excited about it. So I'm going to show you um, the first prize that I'm going to be offering up for this knit along. It is from Beehive Yarns, um, at Beehive Yarns on Instagram. Beth so freaking kindly donated... Um, some yarn to the podcast to give away, and I want this to be a prize for the knit along. So, without further ado, this is Beehive Yarns, 
in the Barbarella base in the Rose Lichen colorway. And this is a Superwash Merino Nylon and Stellina blend. This colorway is so gorgeous. I love it so much. And along with this is going to come this oh, beautiful soap with a little bee on it. And also you get a little bee stitch marker. It's so cute. So thank you again so much, Beth, for donating this. Um, Beth has a fairly new Etsy shop, so you should go check it out. I'm going to go let the cat in. So, sorry Beth. Beth has a fairly new Etsy shop. Um, find it at Beehive Yarns on Etsy. And um, I purchased something from her first shop update because so I was really excited about it. Um, and yeah, I hope I hope you guys knit along because someone's gonna look, look at this. Oh my God, I love it. It's so pretty. So, Yay for prizes! Okay, did I get everything out that I needed to about that? Brioche, knit along. Do it. Go check out that thread. Um, okay, so I want to do, like I said, the Rebel 2 shawl. And I have some yarn, but I don't know what to do. So, last week I showed you the two skeins of yarn that I purchased from Bull and Vine. And I have two skeins of Moonstone Dye Works that I'm thinking about pairing. This is a two color brioche shawl. And check it. Okay, so I'm thinking either this color combination. This is Bull and Vine Yarns in Goth Day Cake and one of my new colorways that will be available in the shop tomorrow. Um, so either this kind of speckly pink and gray with pink speckles, or this one, which is Von Vine's Paranormal colorway and my Moon Age Daydream colorway, and what happens what they look like together. Um, what you kind of can't see on the screen is that this beautiful skein of Paranormal Has these amazing pops of electric green in it, which I think go really, really well with the purple. So I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, I don't know what to do. I could also switch them. If you have an opinion, let me know. But I really, really want to start that shawl soon and I am super excited about it because brioche is fun. I think um, Celeste of the Yarn to Table podcast put it really well when she said something to the effect of brioche, it's fun as hell. Because it is. So anyway, that's the new knit along. Super stoked. And I also have a giveaway to do right now. Um, this is a really, really exciting giveaway. Lindsay of Lost and Fond asked if she could send me a birthday gift and I was so, so touched. And uh, she sent me some freaking awesome stitch markers and stuff and I am so excited because she also gave me a second set of these things to give to you. So this is Lost and Fond. She's at Lost and Fond on Instagram and she is on Etsy. Her shop is amazing. She does these enameled progress keepers and they're beautiful. And so for my birthday, thank you so much, Lindsay. She sent me, the cat's leaving. Girl, what are you doing? She's gonna sit on my yarn. So she sent me these two freaking adorable progress keepers. There's a little sheep and a little panda. I love them so much. And these gorgeous stitch markers. That are like, what are they, hexagons? 
Uh, they're something guns and they're super cool and a macaron stitch marker holder. It is so cool. Um, so she sent along a little package for you guys because she is super kind and generous. So I'm going to do a giveaway this week for somebody to win this. Um, what I'm going to do is open up a thread in the Ravelry group, um, go to that thread, check out the prompt. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to have to answer the question and then I will do a random number generator draw next week's episode to pick a winner for this bag of awesomeness from Lost and Fond. Thank you so much, Lindsay. She also so, so kindly um, offered you guys a coupon code good for the rest of 2017. This is amazing. So it's 15% off anything in her shop through 2017 with the code squirrel pie. So <laughs> go check out Lindsay's shop lost and fond on Etsy. And if you like what you see, you can get 15% off with squirrel pie. Yes. So also go check out the giveaway thread and win some of these super awesome things. I had to steal these progress keepers off of my project that I had already put them on because as soon as I got it, I ripped it open and started using everything. <laughs> what am I wearing? You might ask. Well, you may not be surprised to learn that I am wearing the Agnes top, which is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern that I wear all the time. I have several versions of this top. It's like my favorite thing to sew. Um, and this one is with some really thick, not that stretch, stretchy um, knit fabric uh, with sea life on it. I got octopuses and turtles and dolphins and I love it. Um, this is back when I was making this pattern using the small size rather than the extra small size, which is what fits me better. Um, so it's a little big, as you can kind of see in these types of area, areas here. But uh, I still love it, and I'm, I'm repping the under the sea vibe today. And on to my knitting. You guys want to talk about some knitting? That sounds fun. By the way, today, it's a little nerve wracking because while I usually have Fridays all to myself with the house, I have the house to myself on Fridays generally, um, because I have the day off of work. My husband though usually works on Fridays. Well, for the summer, he works at a college. For the summer, he gets Fridays off. So now for the next, I think like two months, he's gonna be home on Fridays. And so he's out there in the rest of the house while I'm recording. And like Kristen on the Yarngasm podcast talked about in her show yesterday, uh, it's really nerve wracking recording when your partner's home. I've never done it before. I tried it once really early on and uh, I couldn't do it. So he promised to wear headphones. So he, <laughs> he's really kindly out there eating breakfast, wearing headphones so that he can't hear me, but I'm still like all flustered and embarrassed and stuff, which is totally stupid, but. It's funny. So, I can hear him. <laughs> so anyway, he's gonna be here while we record for the next couple of months. We'll see how that goes. I've, I'm gonna try to kick him out of the house. I think he's gonna go on a bike ride after he's done eating, so he'll be gone for a little while. Knitting. What are we doing? What are we doing there? Let's see. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do first? is put my progress keepers back on my project because I left them there I don't want them to go back on before I show you okay so my first project is a brand new cast on I cast on the Townis socks by Becky Sorensen, who is the awesome, amazing host of Stringing It Together. Uh, she put out this sock pattern, I think last week. I immediately bought it and cast on because uh, I love it. 
And this is where I'm at so far. So this is a textured sock pattern. Um, it's got these knit pearl alternating rounds that create this super cool triangle theme and all of them. The yarn that I am using is some very old stash Space Cadet yarns. And it's really beautiful. It is the Azara base, which is 80% Superwash BFL and 20% nylon in the gentle colorway. I love Space Cadet yarns. This is the only skein of Space Cadet yarns that I've ever, ever purchased. And this is my first time using it. And I've always loved Space Cadet yarns though, because they got a little alien on them. And it's adorable. I am loving this. It's a really soft pink with really vague pops really sparsely throughout it of um, kind of like this like grungy blue color. It's really, really pretty. And I really, really like this base a lot. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with these socks. So these are really beautiful and really fun and really, really easy. I'm really, really enjoying working up this pattern so far. Um, the pattern itself comes either charted or with written out instructions. And unlike what I normally do, I've been using the written out instructions instead of the chart. I don't know why, for this particular pattern, I really, really like the written instructions, whereas generally I am a chart girl all the way. But I really like the written directions for this. I glance at the directions once every round and I'm like good to go for the whole round. I'm doing the smallest size. So this is a 56 stitch count sock, which is so awesome. I do a 56, 56 count sock um, for all my socks. And a lot of times when I download a sock pattern, it doesn't go, if it comes in more than one size, which sometimes it doesn't, um, a lot of times it doesn't go down to 56 stitches. And so I'll have to like modify it to make it 56 stitches, but I was so happy to learn that she did a 56 size, which was perfect for me. And that's what I'm using. Squirtle. And I love it. I did a size zero on the cuff and I'm using a size one Haya Haya Sharp for the rest of the sock. Um, she has you do a German twisted cast on for this pattern. And she also has a video tutorial on how to do it, which I used because I've never done a German twisted cast on before. And oh my God, I love it so much. I'm a convert. I'm gonna use it for everything from now on. It is so awesome. It's stretchy, but it's, it's also neat. I usually just use a long tail, regular long tail cast on for my socks and I, haven't been that happy with that in a long time um, because it stretches to a point and then it's rigid sooner than it I might want it to be to get it over my heel pretty much and um, this is so much stretchier but also super neat I really 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 like this cast on I'm totally gonna keep using it and her tutorial was awesome I am gonna use that tutorial again for sure because I don't have it memorized yet um, there's also a heel that comes with this pattern called the New Depth Seal, and I'm excited to use that and see how that works for me. This project is living in my super janky cats with antlers bag that I made for myself. It was my very first project bag, and it's janky, but I love it. It's got a hot pink zipper, which is super cool. And I've got my panda, yay. So I am loving those socks. Check it out on Ravelry, The Town of Socks by Becky Sorensen. She wrote a great pattern. Thank you, Becky. Next up in my awesome library bag with my Pusheen pin on it are my Jinx socks. This is Jinx yarn in the rainbow colorway. I love it. And here's my cake cone. <laughs> um, I've got the first sock done. 
So I have a hoe. Hooray! Here she is. I love the way this yarn knits up so much. It's a self-striping colorway with this muted rainbow, and I think it's gorgeous, and I love it. Um, so this is a sport weight yarn. This is Jinx Yarns, her strong sport base. Um, so since it's a sport weight yarn, I go up a needle size, and I did my ribbing on a size one, and the rest of the sock on a size one and a half, and I do a 48 stitch count instead of a 56. These were super quick and super easy. I did a heel fluff and gusset, and my regular rounded toe with the Kitchener finish. Um, so it gives a longer, more slowly decreasing toe, and then it still has a little flat part at the end for my toes. And I love my hoe. I think she's beautiful. Second sock is currently on the needles. Squirrel away. That's what I've got so far. Not too far into it, but it's super fun stocking it, and it's only 48 stitches around, so I'm having a really good time with these. This is what I was still doing the regular long tail cast on. I'm so happy about this German cast on thing. Oh my god, you guys should try it. It's really good. So that's my two pairs of socks that I've got going right now. And is that it for these? I think that's it for these. This is my Salal cardigan. I'm so close. That Squirrel Speaks project bag. And in here we've got my Andy Satterland cardigan which is the Salal cardigan, and I have a sleeve done. Check it. I love this thing. So this is the Salal cardigan. It is a cropped cardigan by Andy Satterland. It calls for DK weight, or sport weight, DK weight yarn. And it's gorgeous. It's got this lace detailing in the front. It was a top-down cardigan uh, with set-in sleeves, which I love. So I've got the body finish that's been finished for a couple weeks now, and I finished the sleeve last night. The pattern does not call for a tubular bind off, but I did one anyway, because I like it. I think it looks really good. Um, the only modification that I've made on this thing so far is that I did the ribbing a little longer than called for in the pattern, because I like a long ribbing and I wanted it to be a teeny bit longer. So this sleeve was really easy, really fun. It went by really quick because it's not that long. It is a three-quarter length sleeve, which is my sleeve length of choice, and that's what was called for in the pattern. I have picked up for the second sleeve. So this is the sleeve hole, and uh, pretty much I have picked up all the stitches around, and now I will do the sleeve sleeve cap using short rows and then it'll just be a little bit of stockinette in the round until I'm done and then I'll just have to do the button band and then I'll have a sweater. I can't wait. Um, what I like to do when I am picking up stitches for a sleeve in this manner where you already have a sleeve hole and you're picking up stitches all the way around um, is if you can see I have got stitch markers on the top, on the bottom, there's my taco, and on the sides, here and here. Um, so to ensure that I pick up stitches fairly evenly, what I do is I divide the number of stitches that I have to pick up by four. And then I do, I go like this and figure out the top and the bottom, and then I go like this and figure out the top and the bottom there. And so I've essentially input stitch markers. So I've just divided the whole sleeve hole by four. And then I, for the most part, pick up an even amount of stitches in each quadrant of the sleeve hole. Um, I'll typically do like two less stitches in the bottom than in the top, just because in my mind it makes more sense 
to have more fabric up here than it does up here. I mean, down here. Um, so in case that helps anybody, that's how I like to do things like this is I'll divide it in four with stitch markers, divide the count in four, and then kind of evenly disperse them that way. To me, it's easier to evenly disperse 14 stitches in a certain space than it is to disperse 56 stitches in a space that's four times as big. So I'm using a size six, my signature needles, and I'm using a size five for the ribbing, which I also don't think the pattern calls for going down a needle size for ribbing, but I always do that anyway, just cause I like it. So I'm so super stoked about this. I can't wait to wear it. The yarn, the yarn that I'm using is Green Mountain Spinnery, New Mexico Organic. And it's beautiful. It's 100% um, non-superwash wool. It is a woolen spun yarn, I believe. And I believe it's Rambouillet fiber. And this is beautiful, gorgeous, natural yarn, and I love it. I'm pretty sure it's undyed. It's a gray kind of oatmeal, oatmeal y color. I started out with five skeins. I'm on my third skein right now. Is that right? That's right. That's totally right. And I'm getting super close. I love Andy Satterland's patterns. This one was in an issue of Stranded Magazine, and it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern that I am really enjoying. Uh, this is my second Andy Satterland cardigan, and I am liking this one more than the first one. They're both very similar um, with stylistic differences, but the construction is the same. I really like the construction method, and I really like the gauge that I'm getting on this one a lot. Um, so this is a DK sport yarn, depending on where you look. On the tag, it says it's a DK, but on Ravelry, it says it's a sport. It knit up for me like a DK, so that's what we're going with. And I seriously love this project. Then, then is my granny stripe crochet blanket. I picked her back up and I've transferred her from the project bag that I had her in to this giant thing. And here's a bag full of minis. I don't really like this guy, but I do like this guy. This is my sexy campers bag that my husband bought me. That's got a bunch of yarn in it for this project. And just to show you where I'm at. I worked on this for a couple evenings this last week. And I think it's a couple inches bigger than it was before. Um, so this is my granny, stri granny stripe crochet blanket. And I learned how to do this from a YouTube tutorial that I think is really, really good. And I've linked to it in the show notes before. I will do so again today. So check that out if you're interested. Um, it helped me so much because I'm not a crocheter. I don't really know how to do the, I didn't really know how to do the turns and the beginning bit. So this tutorial walks you through everything for a blanket like this. It was super helpful. Um, yeah, I'm using a size E tulip crochet hook that I really, really like. And it's so fun. Fingering weight scraps. I love it. And it's getting to the point where I can use it as a blanket as I'm working on it. And what I finished up this week was a set of mini skeins that Kelly, who is Down Home Pearl, had sent me. And Seriously, I think it's my favorite section in the whole blanket. I loved these minis so much. Um, they included yarns like People of Fields and Sweet Sparrow, and oh my god. The colors in this set of mini skeins was just like perfectly me. I love them. So I'm loving this blanket, it's coming along. And I have been working on my next ball of 
hand spun singles to add. Um, I did a bunch of drop spindled singles hand spun for this blanket a few weeks ago for the mini scrap along and I'm working on my second set right now. Um, so spinning is my next segment and this is what I've got for that. I am working on a set of Wooly Witch Rolags, which are gorgeous. Here's the one I'm working on now. And it is really, really fun to spin. Um, check out the Wooly Witch on Etsy. She has got some really beautiful Rolags. And I got a whole set with a whole bunch of different fibers. And I'm more than halfway through them now. I don't know what fibers are in this one. Um, but there's definitely some Angelina in here. It's really, really nice to spin. So this is what I have so far. And I am just gonna spin these up and leave them as singles. As soon as I'm done with the rest of the set of Earl Eggs, I will wind them off, skein them up, wash them, and add them to my blanket. And this is my wooden top whirl uh, drop spindle. It's a little clunky, a little heavy. It used to be either top or bottom whorl, but I dropped it on the floor so much that the bottom whorl broke, or that the, yeah, bottom whorl hook broke off. But it's okay, I never used it that way. Anyway, um, I'm considering getting a new drop spindle because like I said, uh, this one's a little heavy, a little clunky, and I am considering getting a Trindle. Trindleman on Etsy, I was browsing his shop a few nights ago. He's got moonstone balls for, okay, so a trindle is like, I don't know if it's a thing or if it's just like a thing this guy makes. I don't, I don't know, but they're really cool. What a trindle is, is um, a shaft and coming off of the shaft are three little sticks with stone beads at the end of each one. So there's three of them. And so instead of having like a whole whirl here, it just has, um, three little balls of stone or whatever. <laughs> I'm explaining this really bad. Um, but they are really cool. And I'm thinking about getting one because like I said, he's got moonstone beads, which moonstone dye works. I should get it, right? I should get it, right? I think I should get it. But yeah, I don't think this is, I've never really worked with another drop spindle except for this one. and. I think I would like a more delicate one, maybe? So we'll see. But this has been super fun. Um, I have been seeing so much spinning lately on other podcasts that I'm really, really, really getting inspired to get back on my ladybug wheel. I still haven't finished my natural brown fiber that I wanted to finish spinning for my Helen Stewart Sonder shawl, which calls for bulky weight yarn, I spun up some alpaca wool blend fiber. Woolen style. And I got most of the yardage I need. So I need to finish spinning that. Um, but I'm really tempted by some other fiber that I have sitting around. Um, I'm looking at one right over there because I picked it out as my next spinning project because I'm so inspired by everybody else who's been spinning right now. Um, Casey Mara of Casey's Creative Musings got a wheel recently, her first wheel, and so she just put out a video of herself spinning on that wheel, and I'm like so inspired to get out some fiber. Um, Kristen from Volum Vine just started spinning again on her wheel to Lula, so I'm like super jealous of everybody's wheel stuff right now, so I'm gonna go get that fiber and show you. So I'm thinking about throwing this on my wheel next. This is some Moon Rover fiber. It's um, from when I was in her fiber club and it's superwash merino nylon fiber. And it's a lot, it's like five ounces, I think. But it's gorgeous, look at these colors. There we go. So I'm thinking of spinning this up, hopefully into a fingering weight three ply and make some socks. We'll see. I'm tempted. My wheel is calling me right now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for spinning. Check out the Wooly Witch on Etsy. Her Rolags are really, really nice to use, especially with a drop spindle.
I really, really like them. Um, I have a tiny bit. I have some tiny stash enhancements because like I said, Beehive Yarns opened up on Etsy and I really wanted to get something from her first update. So I got a set of mini skeins and I love them. So this is what I ordered from Beehive Yarns. It's this set of minis and they're so pretty. My favorite one is this hot pink one that's totally blown up camera because it's so hot pink. I love them. And as you can see here, she attached a little bee progress keeper. Oh my god. It's so cute. Oh god, a little bee hanging from the honeycomb. So I love these and as you saw before, she also donated a skein to the podcast because she's so awesome. She also donated another donated another skein for me, and thank you so much again, Beth. It is so gorgeous. Um, so this is the one. She sent me two skeins and said I could keep one and give one away, and this is the one I'm keeping. Look at it. It's so gorgeous. This one is her Bardot base. The other one, by the way, was her Barbarella base. She names her bases after women with beehives, beehive hairdos. And oh God, she's just, she is so cool, you guys. So this is the Bardot base, uh, which is superwash merino nylon. The colorway is Desert Trail. And as I may or may not have said in the past, I am a desert rat at heart. Even though I live in a beautiful rainy coastal town, I come from the desert. I love the desert. And this colorway is very beautiful. And I love it so much. And mine comes with another little bee progress keeper too. I love progress keepers, you guys. No doubt. I love them. I don't use them to keep progress. I use them as decoration for my knitting. Um, but she sent me the skin yarn and I love it so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm gonna break into these like as soon as I'm done filming and put them in my blanket. I cannot wait. She also sent me a little soap. What's next? Is that it? That's it. So I have a shop update happening tomorrow, which is Saturday, June 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Etsy for my shop, Moonstone Dye Works. I hope you can make it if you like what you see because I'm gonna show you everything that is going to be in that update now. So in the shop tomorrow, we will be having some more Moon Age Daydream, which is a colorway that I love. And I'm gonna have this on all three bases, the Merino Singles, which is a 100% Merino Superwash Single Ply. I am also gonna have it on the Merino Fingering, which is 100% Superwash Merino Two Ply. And I will also have it on my Stellina sock, which is a superwash merino Stellina nylon blend two ply fingering light yarn. So Moon Age Daydream on all the bases. I'm also going to have another colorway that I came up with last week that I really, really like. And I showed you earlier as a possible candidate for my Rebel 2 shawl. This is called F Me Pumps told you I'm on an Amy Winehouse kick right now. F me pumps. So <laughs> I really, really like this colorway. It's uh, it is this vague pink with black and gray and hot pink and purple speckles. So check that out. This is going to be available on Merino singles and on still in the sock. I will also have a couple of skeins of this was kind of an experimental one of a kind colorway that I am calling Atomic Rust. And it's um it's mostly pink with these kind of greenish mustardish speckles throughout it. So Atomic Rest, that'll be in the shop. My next new colorway is called Pastoralia. 
And this is a tonal green with bits of orange and red in it. It is showing up more pastel on screen than it is. It's got some neons in it in real life, um, but you'll see a more accurate color representation in the pictures on the listing. But there we go. Um, so those are all the colorways that are going to be in the shop tomorrow. Check it out if you are interested. It's going to be on Etsy. Moonstone Dye Works update at 10 o'clock Pacific time. 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, speaking of Moonstone Dye Works, um, Melissa from Knitting the Stash, who uh, has the amazing Knitting the Stash podcast, which is one of my very favorite podcasts, definitely check her out if you have not yet. I love her podcast. Um, she, on her blog, is going to be featuring Moonstone Dye Works, and she did a little interview with me, and that is going to go up on her blog on Saturday, which is June 10th, same day as the update. Uh, so check that out. I'll link to it in the show notes. I was super flattered to be featured on her blog for Moonstone Dye Works. Um, so check it out if you're interested in reading a little interview with yours truly. Um, thank you, Melissa, for doing that. It was really, really fun. So check out her podcast, Knitting the Stash. I love it. That is pretty much it for this week. As for favorites, um, it's you guys. You guys are my favorite. Thank you so much for spending time with me every week and sending me messages and having lines of communication open between us. I love talking to you guys. I love getting to know other people in this online fiber community and this has been just such a good way to do it. I have been loving doing the podcast so much and I've been loving getting to know viewers and other people who knit and go online <laughs> and stuff. Um, so thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sending messages and leaving comments and connecting with me and connecting on Instagram and Ravelry. I love it. Every time I get to talk to anybody about knitting, it brightens my day a little bit. So you guys are my favorites, seriously, ever. So thank you. Um, thank you for being here with me this week, here with me and my husband who's walking around making me nervous. Thank you for being here because you're who I want to be with right now. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. That way you will be kept up to date on all future episodes. Join the Ravelry group. Join the Brioche Knit Along. I forgot to mention, and I'll put it in the screen earlier. On Instagram, use hashtag Brioche Along 2017. I hope you knit some brioche with me. I really, really, really do. I'm serious. I think you should join this knit along. I'm just saying. I hope you all have a lovely week. Have fun. Stay awesome. Bye, guys.